Well, hello, my friends. It's your old pal, Joy the Lion. Well, we're starting out our little trip today, um, checking out the area around the Sydney Opera House, and today is the day that we are doing our Australian meetup. This will be the third continent that we have met lion hearts in, and I'm excited. I've been getting uh, messages from people on YouTube and Instagram saying that they're coming today, so this should be a blast. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Where's this guy going? So I mentioned yesterday that people climb this bridge and you can see there are people walking on the very top of it right now taking that tour. It's over $200 to do that, but that's your thing. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were taking off for Florence, we ran into Wayne Coyne from the Flaming Lips and he said that they were catching a flight to come and play here, Sydney Opera House. We're walking through the opera bar now. If you look over here underneath the bridge, you can see Luna Park. Now the Sydney Opera House is known as like an architectural masterpiece and it's one of those things that everybody likes to check out. But our friend Barry here used to work here and he was actually saying the, the sound here is not that great compared to like what it should be. <laughs> he said for an opera house, it's, it's not got the greatest sound. Now Barry, one of the things you told me was that they actually have like a place inside the opera house that you can fish. That's correct. So if you go down about two floors underneath here, there's a bunch of corridors under the house. And these sea walls here at the side, there's an inlet that lets the water come inside and there's a gap of around maybe three or four meters where the water is coming inside the opera house and you can fish inside the opera house. Now hopefully, since he used to work here, he knows people here and hopefully we'll get a tour of the inside of the Opera House, kind of a private tour, uh, before we take off. So there's actually five different performance spaces inside the Opera House. Just like a ship, there's two sides to the Opera House. follow where this boat's going you can see there's a fort out in the center of the water take a look said so it's Fort Deniston Barry was just telling us that the uh, tiling here they had replaced cost 37 million dollars. Let's look at the tiling. Look inside the bar restaurant of the Opera House, isn't that cool? Wow. How crazy is that, that I just met the singer of the Flaming Lips who was talking about this place and then like not more than a month later I'm here myself. Now we're gonna go check out over here. Looks like there's some topiary that says bite me over here. Now like I said, we'll come back another day and we're gonna try and take a tour of it. Now we're gonna wander into this park. I wanna check out a few things. Going by the Queen Elizabeth II gate. Pretty cool gates, check them out. See, I saw this from the Opera House. I was like, what does that say? Does that really say bite me? It sure does. <laughs> That's what this is all about. So we're now heading off to Frankie's Pizza. I'm gonna do my meetup and Vicky's gonna do a book meet reading. Up. Yeah, she's, gonna, she's part of the meetup as well, but she's gonna be reading stories out of her book tonight. Woo! 
All right, the moment of truth. Will anyone show up to this thing? Here's Frankie's. And look at that, a big poster of Vicky right there on the wall. Rock and roll. I don't know if they're expecting vampires or Dracula or what, but look at all that garlic hanging there. That's Frankie's down there. All right, our first two. All right, what, you got a gift for me, huh? Yeah, we got a gift for you. Yes. This is our favorite Australian animal, which is a wombat, which we give to well, all our American friends, whether we're there or if they come here. So, Brody, thank you so much. That's so cool of you. I actually saw my first wombat yesterday. You gotta name it though. You gotta give it a name. I should name it Linus. Two more. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Paul and Milan. Thank you for coming out. Do you? Thanks for coming out. The old 1930s, 40s. Yeah? You know. Really cool, thank right. you for coming yeah, out. Nice Great way to yeah. see LA and yeah. the way you live, and it's wonderful. Have you ever been to LA? What? Yeah, uh, yeah I've been there three times. I've been one. Yeah? I've done the Lauren Hardy step. So you have. Yeah, four, Next four, time you yeah. go, you gotta do the Three Stooges steps. Yeah. There's a separate I'm not set. Ten Stooges, not big really? Fan, no. Some people. Lauren Hardy Chaplin. Um, so, yeah, I love all that. Love cool. That's what got me into it. Oh, very cool. Oh, look here, we have two more. This is Thank you. Us, Sarah. We're from Victoria. We've come to see you. Really? Yes, you traveled for me. For you. So we sweet. Love nice you, shirt, by the way. Pink Floyd, great. Yeah, we love you. Love your dog. Oh, thank you. I know I wish I could have brought Ja, but uh, yeah. I, I found out from Johnny Depp's experience that I can't no, sneak my dog into the no, country. Not so. politicians, no. <laughs> no. No, not safe, is it? <laughs> also, part of our meetup, Vicki Hamilton. Nice shirt, Vicki. Yeah. I am the the queen of barter town. <laughs> Look, we're getting quite a crew out here. Two more. Where did you guys come from? Oh, uh, we're from out west. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, west of the city. Thank you for coming out to meet me. This is a, a real honor to have everybody out here. Yeah. I never thought anyone would care oh, from yeah. all the way in the U.S. Oh yeah. I've probably been watching you for about a month now, I suppose. Oh, so good timing. Yeah, yeah, I was Before Adam. you get tired of me. I was watching Adam first, and then he dropped off watching videos. I'm doing them every day. Yeah. I picked up on you. You're doing them every day. So yeah. Yeah. There's. I mean, there's a lot of videos to catch up on. So I hope you like what you see. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks for coming out. You explain things very well. Like, that's what I like about it. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. So Azari is gonna lead everyone in a song. This is so cool. Oh, in excess. I was just gonna say the sirens. There's a bus cop, they're gonna come around. We can live for a thousand years if I touch. So now I feel like a jerk. We've been hanging out out front. All of us been hanging out out here talking, having fun. And this poor guy's been inside waiting for me and even brought me a, a little surprise. What did you bring me? What is this? It is a Australian scrotum pouch. <laughs> and what do I do with this? I see a kangaroo on there. Yep, yeah, you can put in there whatever you want. <laughs> okay, I have an idea of what I can put in there. And look, he brought this for Amy. Look at that. That's awesome. The kangaroo keychain. 
I'm a little jealous now. And you were downstairs waiting on me too. I'm so sorry. Where are you from? How are you? We're from Newcastle, two hours north of Sydney. I saw you posting that you were coming. That's so cool of you. I'm sorry I was up here. I didn't even realize everybody was, or people had gone downstairs already. Yeah. We had a bit of a drive to get here, so. Well, I'm here. I'm hanging out, so. I can't believe what you guys just told me. Tell, tell that again, how you met each other. Yep, so 10 years ago, we, I did my first deal like part of tour with Scott when he used to meet people at the Grove and pick them up. And then there was a post on one of the, on the dealer Departed like web's um, Facebook group where everybody was from one day and we were all commenting and we found out that we lived in the same town. That's and so that's cool. And we became friends. And then through you, with Scott, that's how we got onto you. Well. That is so cool. I know Scott will love hearing that. Yeah. All the way in Australia, we, we both share friends and fans. That's so cool. Yeah. All right, now we're coming in for some food and to check out the space. I've been having a meet out outside, the meetup outside, because uh, we had some youth come, and this is an 18 or older place, and I didn't know that, so this is Frankie's. Oh, dude, check this out. Aerosmith pinball, Kiss pinball, Iron Maiden pinball, ACDC, Metallica, and since Vicky's here, Guns N' Roses. Here's the bar for Frankie's. They have all kinds of cool Frankie's t-shirts that are based off of rock stuff. Check them out. This one's very Iron Maiden. Hello. This is our pal, Azaria. We have a lift on. You can't buy what we have. I should like you for a million. Well, I still have my youth. One day I walked to the Motley house to hang out with my old friends as I approached. I noticed that the front door was barely attached. Knock, knock, I said. Hey, Vicky, come on in, Tommy shouted from the living room. Tommy was sitting on the living room couch in a pair of cut-off shorts, highlighting the length of his long-toned legs. What's up with the door, I asked. Tommy says, oh, nothing. The cops just didn't want to wait for us to answer it. Is anyone in jail, I ask, a little worried. No, no. We're all intact. I breathe a little easier. Nikki's out on the patio. Cool, I reply. I walk past the kitchen, smelling of something rotting, burnt hair, and lighter fluid. Nikki was out on the patio in red leather boots with stiletto heels up past his knees. I eyed him up and down and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to figure out how to light my boots on fire without scorching my hair. I just about burned off half my eyebrows and eyelashes on the last try. So I got to, I got to lean back when the flames throw to avoid that. Nikki rubs a little pyro gel on his boots and lights them with a lighter. Pretty cool, huh? I guess so, but maybe you want to keep a fire extinguisher nearby. All the clubs have those, he says. At closer inspection, I noticed that his eyelashes and eyebrows had been in the line of fire. Be careful with that, I said. And by the way, when was the last time you took out your garbage? Nikki smiles and says, I'll get rid of that right now. He grabs two overflowing brown paper bags and throws them off the patio onto the apartment below. I'm sure your neighbors are gonna be happy when they discover that, I smile. He said, it's okay, they already hate us. And then like 
two weeks later, they got thrown out of that apartment. It was on Clark Street by the Board of Health. Like the neighbors, like got them out of there. So they were no longer neighbors of my record store. And then Nikki moved in with Lita Ford, and they all kind of moved in with different chicks and went on tour right after that. It was supposed to only be a couple of days, but what was a couple of days ended up being six months. And um, this is from chapter one, which is called Welcome Back to the Jungle. March 26, 1986. Where are you going? We have to be at Geffen Records in an hour to sign the contract, I said. Axel whizzes by me on his way out the door, his green eyes turning lime green kaleidoscopes. Go without me, he says, slamming the screen door and stomping off past the swimming pool, straight out at the wrought iron gate, heading to east on the sunset strip. What's that about, I say to Slash, who is fresh out of the shower. His long curly locks are even longer from the weight of the water. He sits on the worn sofa in the living room, strumming his unplugged, sunburst Les Paul while staring at the MTV video countdown on the television. He can't find his contact lenses. He thinks somebody stole them. Slash rolls his eyes and sighs and lights another Marlboro Red. His last one is still smoldering in a pyramid of cigarette butts on a heap of empty beer bottles and a near empty gallon of Jack Daniels. Help me find them. Fuck, we're going to be late. We can't be late to sign the contract after they took that time to get the, ex the advance check. I said out loud. I sift through the debris of last night's party, looking for Axel's mis missing contact lenses. Make them wait, is he adds, as he's checking his reflection and fluffs his blue-black hair in the ba bathroom medicine cabinet. Satisfied, he carefully places his gaspy cap to the, a tilt to the left. The phone rings and Welcome to the Jungle is playing on a continuous loop. It's the part where Axel sings, You're in the jungle, baby, you're gonna die, at the sound of the beat. To this day, I can't hear that without getting shivers up my spine. Duff is saying, Pick up, man, pick up. I pick up the phone and the answering machine feeds back, screeching in Duff's ear and mine. Ouch, I'll be there in a half hour, Duff says. I hang up the phone and continue to look for the contact lenses. The clock is ticking louder and louder. Suddenly, the realization hits me that they're definitely gonna be late. Why would I think anything would go different today than any other day? This is par for the course for this band. Steven bounces in, smiling from ear to ear. Today's the day, he says, as he taps out a rhythm on the in living room wall. Not if we don't find Axel's contact lenses, I say. Slash emerges from the one and only bedroom I share with Jennifer Perry, who is my best friend and booker of the world famous Troubadour, holding a covenant contact lens case and a pair of Axel's leather pants. Looky here, he smirks in a pair of pants that he had on a couple of days ago. I said, thank you. Grabbing the case, I run out the door to find Axel, checking the liquor store, shops, restaurants on the strip. He's nowhere to be found. A couple hours pass, and we're still calling and looking for Axel. I call Tom Zutat at Geffen Records and tell him we're running a little late. Why, Tom asks? Oh, you know, we're just trying to get all five of them in one place. I assure him we'll be there soon. A calming thought washes over me. Soon they will not be living in my apartment anymore. <laughs> we'll be there soon. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'll hold down the fort. But hurry, okay, Tom says. Slash comes in the door and I'm putting the receiver down. I don't believe it. Come look. Horrified at what I might see, I follow Slash out to the curb of my apartment on Clark Street and follow him to the corner block and look up at the Whiskey-A-Go-Go. -Go. Oh my God, I scream. Axel is sitting in easy pose overlooking the city where he is becoming the new ruling king. The sun is setting and I think to myself, Jim Morrison would be proud. It's in that moment I realize things are about to change and Guns N' Roses will never be the same. 
Los Angeles glistens at twilight, azure blue, pink, and silver, as the lights from the building give the city its golden overtone. The city traffic slows, and the workday for the nine to fivers is winding down. You can hear the sound of a kick drum and a martial amp blaring from the open door of the clubs on the Sunset Strip. But this is not just any day in the city of angels, or not for Guns and Roses, and certainly not for me. Because tonight, as all other young wannabes, rock stars in West Hollywood, pimp, pose, and dream of becoming famous, Axel Rose slash Duff, Izzy and Steven are about to become household names. <laughs> All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog. Pretty cool to meet people that watch me all the way here in Australia and people that traveled and flew to meet me, people that drove six hours to meet me today. That was pretty freaking awesome. Thank you to everyone that came out. Thank you to Frankie's Pizza for hosting it. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night from Sydney, Australia. Goodbye.